The San Andreas Fault, a tectonic boundary running through California, has long been a source of concern for geologists and seismologists. This geological fault system is capable of producing devastating earthquakes, and the big one represents a hypothetical but plausible scenario where a major earthquake could cause significant damage. The recent announcement by Thomas Jordan, the director of the Southern California Earthquake Center, has undoubtedly sparked apprehension among Californians. According to Jordan, the San Andreas Fault, a perennial source of seismic concern, has reached a critical state and is poised to unleash a significant earthquake in the near future. While the acknowledgement of the seismic hazard is not unexpected, the novel aspect lies in the warning that the southern segment of the fault appears to be tightly locked, primed, and prepared for a seismic event of substantial magnitude. This update serves as a poignant reminder to the residents of California, urging them to remain vigilant and adequately prepared for the potential consequences. The implications of this revelation delve into the profound geological dynamics of the region, highlighting the need for continuous monitoring and scientific research in order to ameliorate the impact of such catastrophic events. The reason behind this highly regarded seismologist expressing such alarming statements is that there hasn't been a significant release of accumulated stresses along the southern section of the San Andreas Fault System for more than 160 years, dating back to 1857. To put it simply, the San Andreas Fault serves as one of several fault lines that demarcate the boundary between the Pacific and North American tectonic plates. While both plates are moving in a general northerly direction, the Pacific Plate is advancing at a faster pace compared to its North American counterpart. As a result, there is a constant buildup of stress along the interface of these two plates, which adds to the concern expressed by the seismologist. This prolonged period of stress accumulation presents a significant risk as it increases the potential for a major seismic event to occur in the future. In 1906, a significant release of accumulated stresses was witnessed in the San Francisco Bay Area, resulting in a devastating earthquake measuring 7.8 on the Richter scale. Another seismic event, known as the Loma Prieta earthquake of 1989, further exemplified the release of stress in Northern California, measuring 6.9 in magnitude. However, it is noteworthy that such events of this magnitude have not yet occurred along the San Andreas Fault in the southern part of the state. It is worth mentioning that the 1994 Northridge event, which inflicted considerable damage, was associated with a separate fault system in close proximity. This discrepancy has led experts to speculate that a massive earthquake along the San Andreas Fault is possibly imminent. The accumulated stress along this fault has raised concerns, and thus, when the long-anticipated Big One event strikes, it will likely have a significant impact. This notion is supported by the sheer amount of stress that has possibly built up over time, thereby intensifying the potential consequences of this impending earthquake. Californians will find satisfactory answers to these questions. The movie portrays an earthquake caused by the San Andreas Fault, measuring a magnitude of 9. While such seismic events are not uncommon worldwide, they typically occur in areas where tectonic plates undergo subduction, meaning one plate is forced beneath another. This phenomenon can be observed in regions like Chile and Japan. However, California's tectonic situation is distinct. The seismic activity here is a result of two plates sliding horizontally past each other, a phenomenon known as a transform boundary. This difference in plate movement contributes to California's unique seismic activity. According to recent estimations, it is suggested that the largest possible magnitude earthquake along the San Andreas Fault System is likely to be 8. However, there is a 7% probability that such a significant event could potentially occur in Southern California within the next 30 years. On the other hand, there is a 75% chance of experiencing a magnitude 7 earthquake during the same time frame. Although the difference between magnitudes 7, 8 and 9 might seem minimal, the amount of energy released varies greatly. In fact, a magnitude 9 earthquake would unleash 32 times more energy compared to a magnitude 8 and a staggering 1,000 times more energy compared to a magnitude 7 event. It is essential to understand the significant disparity in the energy release between these magnitudes in order to fully comprehend the potential destructive force they can bring. In terms of damage, it is undeniable that whether it's a magnitude 7 or 8 earthquake, there will be some level of destruction. 
However, the entire sequence of events portrayed in the film is highly improbable. Take, for instance, the San Andreas Fault. Contrary to the movie's depiction, this fault does not lie beneath the ocean. Consequently, any movement along this fault line would not result in the displacement of water to the extent that a tsunami would be generated. Furthermore, the portrayal of a massive chasm opening up is purely a work of fantasy. In reality, the tectonic plates slide relative to each other rather than moving away from each other as depicted in the film. Thus, while there is some truth to the potential damage caused by earthquakes, it is important to distinguish between the exaggerated scenarios presented in movies and the actual scientific realities. It is within the realms of reality to anticipate a significant level of destruction. Although California has implemented strict building codes that advocate for retrofitting older structures with seismic protection measures and discourage the construction of new buildings in close proximity to known fault lines, achieving complete safety for a building is an unfeasible goal. Despite these proactive measures, the potential for damage during seismic events remains a concern. It should be noted that while efforts have been made to mitigate the impact of earthquakes, the inherent unpredictability and sheer force of natural disasters cannot be fully countered. As part of their efforts to gain insights into the potential consequences of a significant earthquake along the southern San Andreas Fault, the US Geological Survey undertook a comprehensive study. They created a detailed model of a 7.8 magnitude earthquake, simulating a slippage ranging from 2 to 7 meters. This simulation aimed to represent the accumulated stresses that have been building up in that specific area since the occurrence of the last major seismic event. After conducting an analysis using this particular model, it has been determined that the impact of damage would be most severe on structures that span across the fault line. Luckily, the presence of such constructions has significantly decreased ever since the implementation of the 1972 Alquist Priolo Earthquake Fault Zoning Act. However, what would still be adversely affected by the slippage are the numerous infrastructural components that traverse the fault zone. This includes a staggering total of over 970 roads, 40 gas pipes, and 150 power lines. These vital aspects of our infrastructure would undoubtedly bear the brunt of the forces unleashed by the fault's movement. The San Andreas Fault is a transform fault that stretches approximately 800 miles or 1,290 kilometers through California. It forms the boundary between the Pacific Plate to the west and the North American Plate to the east. The fault's location in one of the most populous and economically significant regions of the United States makes it a source of concern for seismic activity. As mentioned, the term Big One refers to a hypothetical massive earthquake that could occur along the San Andreas Fault. While such an event has not yet transpired, it is not a question of if, but when. Geological studies indicate that significant stress has built up along the fault, and when released, it could result in a major seismic event. In this scenario, we consider a magnitude 8 or higher earthquake along the southern segment of the San Andreas Fault, specifically targeting the densely populated areas of Southern California, including Los Angeles and San Diego. A major earthquake of this magnitude would undoubtedly result in a loss of life and the densely populated urban centers of Southern California would be vulnerable to collapsing buildings, infrastructure failures, and transportation disruptions. Although stringent building codes and earthquake-resistant construction measures have been implemented, there are still many older structures that may not withstand such a powerful quake. The big one would cause extensive damage to critical infrastructure, including roads, bridges, airports, and water supply systems. The disruption of transportation networks would hamper emergency response efforts and access to medical facilities. Southern California is a major economic hub, and the consequences of a catastrophic earthquake would have a significant economic impact. Damage to businesses, manufacturing facilities, and the tourism industry could result in billions of dollars in losses. Earthquakes can also trigger environmental consequences, such as landslides, tsunamis, if the fault movement occurs under the ocean and damage to the natural landscape. These effects can further complicate response and recovery efforts. A large-scale earthquake would lead to a considerable number of displaced residents, requiring shelter, food, and medical care. Responding to these humanitarian needs would be a monumental task. The big one could trigger a cascade of additional disasters 
including fires from ruptured gas lines, power outages, and damage to critical lifeline infrastructure. Managing these secondary effects would further strain emergency resources. Given the inevitability of a major earthquake along the San Andreas Fault, preparedness and mitigation efforts are crucial. Californians have been encouraged to create emergency kits, develop family disaster plans, and retrofit older buildings to meet current seismic safety standards. Community resilience measures, such as improved building codes, stricter land use planning, and reinforced critical infrastructure, can help mitigate the impact of a major earthquake. Early warning systems that provide seconds to minutes of advance notice could also save lives and reduce damage. Public education and awareness campaigns play a vital role in ensuring that residents understand the risks and are prepared to respond effectively. Drills, exercises and coordination among emergency services are essential for effective disaster response. The Big One scenario, a massive earthquake along the San Andreas Fault in Southern California, remains a real and concerning possibility. The potential consequences of such an event, including loss of life, infrastructure damage, economic impact and humanitarian needs, are significant. However, proactive preparedness and mitigation measures can help minimize the impact and save lives. It is essential for governments, communities and individuals to prioritize earthquake readiness, invest in resilient infrastructure and develop robust emergency response plans. By taking these steps, we can reduce the devastating effects of a major earthquake when, not if, it occurs along the San Andreas Fault. The lessons learned from other earthquake-prone regions worldwide, combined with ongoing research and preparedness efforts, provide a path toward greater resilience in the face of this inevitable seismic threat. So, what do you make of the San Andreas Fault? And when do you think the big one will hit? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.